Okay, so now we're going to use the distributive property that we've already learned before, and we're going to use solving equations. We're going to put them both together, and now we're doing some real math, which is getting exciting. I'm ready to get my math on. I hope you are too. If you haven't already written down this equation, go ahead and write that down on your piece of paper. You may need to pause this for a second because I'm going to go ahead and start building this thing. Now, here's what seventh graders love to do. They say this is 2 times, so I'm going to start with 2 times x plus 3 and this is not correct. Don't do this. This 2 right here looks like it's being added to the x plus 3, and it is. What this 2 means here is that we have x plus 3 two times. So let's do x plus 3 two times. Okay? So here's x plus 3, and here's x plus 3. Two times. I'm going to rearrange these so they're kind of cute here in our little organ formation here. All right, and this equals 8, so I'm going to go ahead and put myself a positive 8 over here. Okay, and I do not have enough tiles to, uh, to make 8, so I just have to remind myself that there's another tile here, and I'll either put one here later when I have a chance, or I'll just pretend like there's 8 there the whole time. Now, the question is, now I have a whole new uh, equation, and here's how this is going to look. We're going to use our shoop shoop lines and represent this on paper. 2 times x, shoop, shoop. So 2 times x is 2x, and I'm going to write that in a box by itself. And we can see right here in the green that this is 2x. We can see here this is 6, and sure enough, 2 times 3 is 6. So I'm going to put a plus in a box, put a 6 in a box. My equal sign is going to go here, and this is... Still 8. Nothing's changed here. Now what I have a lot of my students do is as they solve equations, I make them draw a line down through the equal sign like this. Okay, and this kind of reminds us that there are two sides of this equation, so when we're doing things, we do things on both sides. Sometimes students have a habit of doing things twice, but doing them on the same side of the equation, and we don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm moving this all down just a little bit so I can still see it. Okay, but I've still got my fake tile right here. 2x plus 6 equals 8. Now, we want to get x alone. Remember, that's the object of the game. The first rule is we want to get the variable by itself. So we can either split this into two groups or we can uh, take these 6 away. Now, it's a bad idea to split these into groups because you can't always do that based on your, your wants. Okay? So we're going to take these 6 away. It's pretty obvious we can do that. We're just going to take 6 away here, and I'm going to take 6 away here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And since uh, now I have some room, I'm going to replace my fake... Uh, with, a, with a real one. 8 minus 6 is 2. So there we go. So I'm left here, and I took 6 away from each side of the equation. So let's record that we did that on paper. We're going to say minus 6. Now, a lot of times students know they need to write this twice, but they'll write the other minus 6 right here. Okay? You can't take 6 away from this green 2x, so don't do it. And that's what this line helps us remember is that we have to do it over here as well. And we did take 6 away from 8. Okay, so that leaves us here with 2x and here with 2. This is easy. 8 minus 6 is 2. I still have my equal sign. See how it just hangs out on this line I drew. 6 minus 6 is an identity, and 2x is 2x. So 2x is still here. So my new equation says 2x equals 2. Now I'm down to my last step. I know that I'm going to have to split these two x's up. And I'm going to split these two up. And so I can see here that x equals 1. That's what an x is. We knew it all along. When I divided that into two groups, I was really dividing by 2. And we show that with a fraction bar. Okay. 2x divided by 2 leaves me with just 1x. I can kind of cross these off to show that's 1 times x equals. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. And I knew x equals 1. I can go back and double check myself. If I put 1 in the place of x here, I get 2 times 1 plus 3. 1 plus 3 is 4, and 2 times 4 is indeed 8. So I have done this equation correctly. Okay, let's do a little tougher equation here. Let's do negative 3. Box it aside. Times x minus 1 equals negative 6. Okay? If 
All right, so we learned in an earlier video, this is really just three groups of x minus 1, but we're going to make them negative groups. So let's start with x minus 1, x minus 1, and x minus 1. And this is three groups of x minus 1, but we want negative three groups. And so we flip all our groups. All right, so it's the opposite of three groups of x minus 1. And over here we have our negative 6. I want to get these X's by themselves, but I can't take away three yellows because there aren't three yellows on my right side to take away. So what I really want to do, hang on, let me rewrite my equation now. So negative three times X is negative three X. Negative three times one is negative three. This is minus, so it's going to stay minus. Negative 3x minus negative 3 is negative 3x plus positive 3. This is negative 3x. This is plus positive 3. And this is negative 6. Okay? It stays the same. Move my tiles up here so I have some more room to work here. Okay? Negative 3x plus positive 3 equals negative 6. And I can't take these yellows away because there aren't yellows here to take away. But what I can do is get rid of those yellows by adding negative 3 right there. Well, if I did that, I have to do that on my other side. And I'm out of tiles, so I'm just going to have to remember that I added an extra negative tile over here. Okay? These are zero pairs, so off they come. Replace my fake tile now. Yes. Okay, so what I just did was I added negative 3 to each side of the equation, or I subtracted 3. Let's call it subtracted 3. Minus 3. Minus 3. Okay. This is still negative 3x. We can see it's still negative 3x. This is negative 6 minus 3. Now, you might struggle with that math problem, negative 6 minus 3. But look, here's the answer. Here's negative 6. Here's minus 3. That's negative 9. It's just more negative. So I get negative 3x equals negative 9. Learned in our last video, we're going to end up dividing this by negative 3. What that means is I'm going to split my tiles into three groups, but I'm going to split them into negative groups. And so I'll split them first. And then, oops, and then I'm just going to flip everything. Remember, if you flip one side of the equation, you have to flip both. And I end up here with x equals positive 3. And that is what we get, because negative 3 divided by negative 3 is positive 1. So that's x. I still have an equals. And negative 9 divided by negative 3. You might not remember that a negative divided by negative is a positive, but you can see it here. We get x equals 3, and that's our answer. Okay? So that's two ways to do multi-step equations with the distributive property, with tiles, and on paper. So you can explain it all, you can perform it all, you can do this, and you'll understand it. And maybe it'll stay with you so you don't have to learn it again next year. <laughs>